I got me one of those rascals. Okay, so hey everybody, Robert Arrington here. You're watching my channel, Deer Meat for Dinner. And a lot of you guys have been asking for a video about what gear I use and how I hunt. If you're gonna go duck hunting, you need to have a sleeve for your gun. Typically it's gonna be wet, it's gonna be muddy, you're gonna be walking through stuff, and the last thing you wanna do is get out on a hunt and have your gun jam. This is very important. It's kind of soft, keeps the gun protected. Inside is the important stuff. It's like a blow pop, you know? Hard candy shell, nice gum in the middle. You got your shell, you got your gun. Make sure it's unloaded. This is my Escort 20 gauge. Actually, it's Sarah's Escort 20 gauge. What's cool about it is that the, the stock of the gun is a little shorter, so when I aim, I can swing around real nice and easy. I shoot the 12 gauge, but it's at home right now. This one was in the truck, and I've been hunting. I got a vote. Yeah, buddy! Yeah! First time I've ever shot this Escort 12 gauge. Very good, Robert, very good. Good way to start the day. I'm right-handed, I'm right-eye dominant. When I throw up, I keep both eyes open. Pow! If it's a longer shot, I may lead him a little, ways, a little ways farther. If it's a closer shot, I'm gonna put it right on his head and pull the trigger. Works every single time. Well, almost every single time. Now, so it's affordable, it fits, and it performs. Escort, Legacy Sports International, check them out. You've gotta have something to put in your gun. That is Kent Fast Teal. This is a 12 gauge three inch, or we shoot the 20 gauge three inch number fours. I like the number fours, it's great for ducks like pintails, whistling ducks, mallards, teals. It's a great all-around all shot, okay? Typically, we're shooting birds that are decoying. They're within 40 yards. This number four fast deal by Kent works awesome. I, they never jam, and <laughs> they work great. Check this out, three birds with one shot. Oh, I killed three with one shot! Holy crap! <laughs> now, as you guys can tell, Remy's back there having just an absolute ball, and that's what hunting's all about. So you've got your escort shotgun, or at least I do. I've got my Kent Fast Deal. You need a thermosel. Let me tell you something, if you're duck hunting anywhere in the south, and even in Arkansas during the early season, let me tell you something, mosquitoes will ruin a hunt. Don't expect someone else to have one. Have your own. Make sure you've got plenty of, of fluid. Check, okay, this one's full. And make sure you've got plenty of extra pads. They're really easy to replace. Get this thing turned on and the mosquitoes will leave you alone. Very important, Thermosel. And again, you guys, I want y'all to know, none of these products I'm talking about, these aren't companies paying me. These are just products that I use in the field and absolutely trust. <laughs> this is just insane. Now you gotta have decoys. These are my green head gear teals. I got a dozen blue wings and a dozen green wings. This is the only way to do decoys. This is the Texas rig. And if you guys are looking for any water fouling equipment, steel shot, decoys, waders, camo, whatever, check out Sportsman Specialties, Felsmere, Florida. Talk to Chris, Andy, or Jeff. Let's say you're going to a hotel. You want that hotel to fit your livelihood. I, I act like mallards are like partying 21 year olds. They talk a lot, they're making a lot of commotion, they're swimming around, they're quacking at everybody, they're having a good time. Therefore, that's how you would call them. You put decoys out, maybe a mojo if you're in the timber, um, or early morning, 
have a lot of decoys, have some bubblers going on, you have a lot of movement because that's what's gonna draw them in, okay? Okay, so I wanna talk specifically about the black belly whistling duck. It's a duck I've been hunting a lot lately, lately and really trying to learn about. Take it. Black bellies are nocturnal birds, so they feed all night long, and then they wanna come back and find a secluded, quiet area that they feel comfortable in, okay? If your teals are getting a lot of pressure in, in an area, they wanna look for a quiet, isolated area that they feel safe in. Now, if you put out a spread for, for whistling ducks, you don't wanna put big ducks that are gonna quack, run around, make a lot of commotion because Think of it this way. Let's say you're on a trip, you're going somewhere, and you're just, you're tired, and you wanna get some sleep. Well, you're not looking for a hotel that's having a monster party. You're looking for a hotel that's got some people in it, so you know it's safe, and it's nice and quiet. That's what whistling ducks are looking for. So whenever I put up my spread, I don't have any mojos, no movement, just a handful, maybe one or two dozen teals in one little area, and I don't want any movement never quack. If those whistling ducks are coming around, never quack because that would be like you being super tired, wanting to get some sleep, pulling up into a hotel and there, there's a bunch of people running around like, you, yeah, let's party, what's up, shots tonight. You'd be like, uh, probably not where I want to lay my head down. Whistling ducks are the same way. So if you're hunting them, they're coming in, don't quack, very little movement, just give them an area, whistle at them a little bit, That's typically what they sound like when they're flying. When they're coming into land, they go like this. Once they're already landed and they're talking to birds in the air, they just go. Something like that. Now, there's no duck in the world harder to mimic than a whistling duck, especially a black belly whistling duck. But give it a try, they'll really cut, come back to it. Once that bird's coming to you, get quiet. Don't say anything to them. If they're going away, whistle at them. Once they cut, maybe, maybe whistle just a touch more, but leave it alone. Well, there's three. This is Sarah's pink tradition call. If you want to get real technical, you're going to need to look at a technical collar. Again, I'm referring to Phil Chase Robertson. They may never win a, a calling competition, but those dudes can call ducks that are deaf. So in Florida, this is my mallard call. That's all I'm doing. And to make that noise, it's just That's if I'm in shallow water. If I'm in deeper water where those birds just want to land and it's no feeding, it's just. <laughs> or just a quack. <laughs> and that's just a hen sitting on the water. If I want to call a drake, take a whistle like this, just, just a whistle put my finger in the end of it and just go do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Tree frog. Learned that from the, the master. Drake. <laughs> now you're mimicking a pair. If you look and you see a, a, a pintail coming in, plug the end. Pintail call, real simple. These are birds you're gonna see around here. If it's a widgeon, <whistles> widgeon call. I'm not the best at that, but whatever. Uh, those, that's just, uh, you know, a little quick tutorial on calling. And put that back in there. 
And that's it. So you gotta find an area that you can hunt. Do some scouting, figure out the birds, sit there without a gun and listen to them. How are they talking to one another? How is that bird talking to another bird that's flying by? Spend some time in the outdoors. And again, I'm not a purist. I shoot a shotgun the way it works for me. If, if you need to close one eye to stay on it, fine. I will tell you this, check out the Burris Speed Bead. Twelve gauge, baby. Burris Speed Bead. I can tell y'all right now, we're out here in Arkansas mud and keeping our cameras safe from the elements is like A number one because if we don't have our footage, all this is just a vacation. So we carry all of our cameras in the Plano all-weather gun guard cases. This is the extra large pistol case. We keep all our still cameras and small video cameras in them. The ducks are just raining in here. But it's time to go home. This is proof positive how much I trust this. Do that with your camera case. That's what it's all about, folks. You want to get out there, you want to have a good time, you want to have a shotgun that you can feel comfortable with. That one ain't going home. You want to be shooting shells that you know are going to perform. You don't want to get out there having a great hunt shooting shells that are going to jam or, or not perform. at the first one and then you shot and dropped it and I was like, oh, I should the second one away up there. I'm not Phil Robertson. I'm not Jace Robertson. I'm not one of these guys that's the best in the world. I've just got some really good land where there's plenty of ducks. And when you come duck hunting with me, it's about having a good time and taking home some nice ducks. These are those days you dream about guys thanks so much for watching deer meat for dinner thanks for checking out all my videos please subscribe and be a part of our channel this is just a day in our life and we appreciate you guys being friends and as always we're out